Hello and welcome to this video about timing verification of scheduling traces recorded on QNX. My name is Jürgen Pöllinger and I'm product manager for the timing solution tier 2 suite at Vector Informatik. In this video, you will get an overview of the timing verification of QNX based systems with the help of the tier 2 suite. First of all, I will show to you the general toolchain and afterwards I show the key features of the tier 2 suite directly within the tool. Let's start with the toolchain. Everything begins with an issue where Microsoft is running on it, Microsoft based on QNX. To be honest, a pure QNX based system also works. You start the trace recording there. This will produce a trace file which can be imported to the tier 2 suite to be more specific by the option inspection of the tier 2 suite. You can enhance this trace with different timing constraints and requirements which can be retrieved by different requirement management tools. After running an evaluation, you will get timing metrics and of course an evaluation of the timing constraints and requirements. This provides a good overview of all the interesting key performance indicators like response time, execution time and CPU load. Additionally, you get a Gantt representation of the recorded scheduling trace. By the way, a key feature of the tier 2 suite is the systematic and consistent analysis of traces which were recorded on classic or adaptive systems. Let's have a more detailed look on the toolchain. Of course, everything starts with the trace recording. For that purpose, we use the QNX modules, trace logger and trace printer. First of all, it is necessary to configure the interesting event classes which is in our case, process, thread, interrupt and kernel calls. By the way, in QNX, it is usually that, like that, that you have to disable explicitly non-interesting event classes. Then you start the recording via the trace logger. This produces a trace file, which needs to con be converted with the trace printer to a file, which can be imported by the tier two suite. The inspection converts the QNX states for processes, threads, interrupts and system calls to internal states which are based on the best trace format. For processes and threads we will have the states active, running, ready, waiting and terminated. For kernel calls we will have terminated, running and suspended. To provide support for the configuration of the tracing, we provide timing bundles. You can find a link in the video description below. Now let's go directly to the tooling. As mentioned, it is necessary to import the recorded trace. For that purpose, I usually use the workflow editor. The workflow editor provides the benefit to configure it only once and then you can replay the import and the evaluation again and again. This is especially helpful for automation use cases. I've already prepared the trace. That's why I can go to the inspection perspective directly. There you have all the important views to do a good timing verification. In the upper region we have the gone chart which shows the different states and tra state transition of the threads, system calls and interrupts. Then in the middle region we have the load chart where you can see the CPU load consumption over time. This helps especially to analyze burst situations. Last but not least we have in the bottom area different metric tables, which give an additional overview of all the metric tables. Like here, we have the resource table, hardware resource table, where you can see the overall CPU load of the cores, processors and ECUs. Additionally, there is the process table, which shows the key performance indicators, the key 
timing metrics for the threads. In this example, we have configured CPU load, response time, start to start, and net execution time. Many more can be configured and evaluated and analyzed. Besides of other metrics, we have also an overview of the fulfillment of all the constraints which were pre-configured. In this example, there are CPU load constraints for the different cores and the ECU. Luckily, these constraints are fulfilled. But unfortunately, there is one violation. And this is a response time constraint for a specific thread which states that th this thread shall not exceed a response time of 10 milliseconds. Well, violation, let's have a look at it. I have configured now here the GAN chart, uh, the histogram, sorry, with the constraint limit. And you can see that there are two instances violating this constraint. Let's take the worst one for further analysis. So this instance exceeds the constraints by a lot. Copy it to the clipboard. And via the clipboard, I can go to the Gaunt chart. And the Gaunt chart can now be used to analyze in further depth why this constraint was violated. Were there any interferences or was the threat really active on the core? which was the case in this example. That's the end of this presentation. I hope it was interesting for you. Thank you for watching. If you want to get further information, have a look at the video description below. There you find the mentioned link to the timing bundles, which helps you to set up the trace recording. And if you want to get further marketing material, you can check out the homepage of the tier two suite. And of course, you can also contact us via the email address embedded at vector.com, where you can talk to one of our experts. Thanks again for watching. I hope we see each other soon.